I spent $80 on this and I don't like it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bottom Shelf Bar. That's Paul. That's Connor. Paul, what are we trying tonight? Well, we're trying uh, Lagavulin Offerman Edition, which I might add is far from bottom shelf, <laughs> ostensibly. <laughs> no. um, this was $80. Uh, I have had Lagavulin in the past and really enjoyed it, and I wholeheartedly trust Nick Offerman with every fiber of my being, so literally the day it came out, I bought it. Uh, and, uh, I haven't had a good relationship with it. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, this is a challenging spirit. It is an 11-year-aged, uh, single malt Isla Scotch, which, basically, if you don't know Scotch, which I don't blame you, uh... Islas and single malts are a combination that can produce some more challenging flavors mm -hmm. and less um, less delicious, <laughs> depending on who you are. And the and this Offerman edition is finished in a Guinness cask. Yes. Which was, um, in case the name does not convey this to you, uh, it are casks that Guinness is aged in and then so the same way that a lot of bourbons are aged in a fresh oak cask And then other whiskeys will use those casks. It's like the same process. Um, so there's Guinness tasting notes in this um, You know like you, you get that like coffee or that like chocolate uh, But overwhelmingly I get other tasting notes. So <laughs> let's do it. Let's drink scotch and instead of shooting it, uh, we're drinking it on a rock. Yeah, because I thought it was just disrespectful to shoot an $80 scotch, regardless of how much Paul might not like it. It is better on, uh, on rock, but it smells kind of like paint when you sniff it. And the tasting note that Paul gets, I think almost exclusively, is rubber. Yeah, burning rubber. Like, no, a, like a tire fire, specifically. It is, it's smoky. Uh, to me, there's a little bit of, like, a salty brininess to it as well. Yeah, I'm getting uh, it now that you've mentioned it, now that you've pointed it out. That's how it goes. It is how it goes, but it, it, that's there. Um, it's just to me, like, I don't know, maybe if it's just too smoky for me, but I think it's a combination of the Guinness notes and the smokiness and the peat. It's just, it's just a little odd. There's a bug. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I don't really like Guinness either, uh, but I like this more than Guinness. And certainly, if you're a fan of Isla Scotch, you might enjoy this. I don't, you know. You know, I've been sitting here swirling this while we were setting up to record, um, and it's improved it a lot, actually. <laughs> and that's something that happens with some whiskeys. It's getting... It's getting much more palatable. Sweeter? Yeah, sweeter. Yeah. I think that's just maybe us getting accustomed to that that intense, intense smokiness. Because the first yeah. sip of this drink... I'm going to stop you right there. I don't think this is intensely smoky. I think But is. compared to something that you might be used to as a, like a bourbon drinker, I could see it. I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to come around. I'm also coming around, actually. <laughs> now that I'm drinking it ice... I've also read, and so I bought this bottle several weeks ago on um, a trip home, and what I've not read- Not to Scotland. <laughs> not to Scotland, no, to Northern Illinois. Uh, I've read that with Lag Lagavulin's specifically, that they tend to open up a lot several weeks after they've been opened and had a chance to oxygenate. So that's, it was definitely better today when I tried it than when I first tried it, so that also might be an aspect of what's going on. Yeah. It's certainly not, um, it's not the friendliest, but if this is what you're into, then I think it's alright so far. Well, we're gonna finish it, and then we will return to a classic game that you haven't seen in a while. Alright, we're bouncing pencils into cups. As you know, we only play games with wood things while we're drinking whiskeys. <laughs> God, I love the smell of a Ticonderoga. Well, anyway, <laughs> it's, it's time to bounce. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing. I am the master of the mini games. Well, we're gonna make a highball now. The king of games. 
All right, this is a scotch highball. It is made with one part scotch to two parts soda water, and that's it. That's the whole drink. Yep. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I've enjoyed highballs a lot in the past. I think it's a good way to drink um, lots of whiskey, so... At all. No, I don't either. <laughs> this is this is a bad highball. This is bad. <laughs> I would not put the scotch in a highball. Oh boy, I kind of gotta finish it. I'm I don't do. You know that brine flavor that you're mentioning? I feel like that's a, that all that comes through in the highball is smoke and brine to me. A lot less smoke though, so that's that's nice. Yeah. Um, but the brine to me comes through real strong. Not like pickle juice strong, but you know, like like salt water strong. It got rid of some of the rubber, which is nice. Yeah. But also, if that's what you're here for, then... I'm glad you tasted go. the rubber too, because I was worried that was just a me being inexperienced with scotch thing. <laughs> I only kind of know what I'm talking about, but I tasted rubber too. Uh, yeah, that was not a good eyeball. Uh, no, it's... Uh, that just made it weird. It is weird. Smoky and briny is what I get out of that highball. Like, I feel, I feel like, honestly, to appreciate this, you need to be, like, a hardcore scotch drinker. Which is the thing. Nick Offerman <laughs> yeah. is. So, to Nick Offerman, this is probably perfection. But we are not him. But we're not him. Yeah, no, I, that's not what not, I drink. Not whatsoever. I yeah. mean, I like scotch, but not, <laughs> not this kind of scotch. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, we're going to bounce uh, some more pencils now. Yeah, I don't have enough tasting notes to say about this. It was just weird. All right. We're going to bounce pencils. Hopefully, I'll get it in one go again. Uh, yep. Okay. I'm not good at this. Oh, shit. <laughs> Are we allowed to stand? Uh, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm really bad at this game still. <laughs> this is gonna be the worst, the worst looking video we've ever put out because I'm running in front of the camera. <laughs> no! Does that count? No. No! <laughs> you remember the time I did 11 of these in a minute? Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed. Ah, ah. <laughs> That's not in the cup. Mm, it's arguably more impressive. All right, all right, you know what? I'll give it to you. You can have it. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Uh, we're gonna make another cocktail for some reason. <laughs> That's right, we're gonna make a... a... Alrighty, everybody, this is a penicillin. It is a cocktail made of two ounces of a blended scotch with three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice and three quarters of an ounce of a honey ginger liqueur, uh, syrup, which I made earlier today. And so it also famously features a floater of about a quarter ounce of a single malt Islay scotch, which we're using this for. So this isn't like the main component of the drink, but it is the nose of the drink because in the in the classic penicillin, that floater um, sort of fills the same uh, role as bitters normally does in a cocktail. So it's like a lot of the nose, it's a lot of like what affects your palate. So, yes. yeah. And for the blended scotch, we're using Monkey Shoulder because it's literally my favorite whiskey that I've ever had. Um, and I always have it around, so yeah. Let's see if this works. This is the most expensive cocktail we've ever reviewed, hands down. <laughs> yeah, we're using an $80 scotch at how much is Monkey Shoulder? This is like 35 bucks here. Yeah. So this well, is expensive, but uh, we do what we want, I guess. <laughs> it's not bottom shelf anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's just bar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's drink. <laughs> That's an interesting cocktail. It is. I like it. You know, interestingly, I've hated the nose of this while drinking on everything else, but in this, the way it modifies, like the way you taste the monkey shoulder is phenomenal. Yeah. I will also say, I think it goes really well with the ginger, which is a bit surprising, but. Yeah, that nice ginger, like, flavor almost um i don't know the way it plays with the peat and the smokiness and even the guinness notes in the in the lagavulin is really good yeah 
Um, this is honestly a great floater for your penicillins if you're yeah. if you're making uh, bar drinks a lot. <laughs> I would say this is excellent. I mean, it should be, given how much it costs. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually really pleased with this cocktail. Um, I know, like I said, I know the Lagavulin is not the main liquor of the cocktail, but it is one of the more important parts of the cocktail. That floater is is extremely important in how you perceive a cocktail, and um, it's it's really good. Yeah. Um, I will say, this works. This cocktail is working really well because you can kind of pick apart, pick it apart, and get a little bit of everything that's in there. But it also works together perfectly. You know, I. I've been drinking it very fast because I really like it. Now, what I should have done is spoke about who created the penicillin because it's a relatively recent liquor creation. I don't remember, though. <laughs> but you know what? Kudos to you if you created the penicillin. I mean, we've spoken about this before, but honey and any whiskey is a phenomenal pairing. Oh, yeah. Um, and the penicillin is directly derived from the Gold Rush, which obviously is a cocktail that we love. It was really good. The The notes worked really well. If you have $120 to drop on <laughs> some whiskey, Monkey Shoulder and uh, Lagavulin Offerman Edition, it's a good combo. Uh, Honestly, the Guinness notes pair with the ginger phenomenally well. Just just in how the, like the nose from the Guinness notes. Um, I was I was very surprised by that. Yeah, it's true. Well, uh, we're going to bounce a pencil. Yeah, we're going to do that again. <laughs> Because <laughs> it wasn't enough of a train wreck last time. All right. Last time, I don't know how much it's going to be edited, but it took us a very long time to get any in. So we're going to see how it goes this time. All right. Three, two, one. I'm not getting tight on the bounces is the problem. Yeah. Shit. Here we go again. Here we go again. Maybe we stopped doing this because we were bad at it. <laughs> no, that couldn't have been it. <laughs> hey, I got it. All right, all right. Whoa. All right, we're gonna make one more cocktail. It's a uh, what's blood it in the sand. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be <laughs> probably good. It'll be something. All right, we'll find out. All right, everybody. This is a blood and sand. It is made with one ounce of a scotch, one ounce of cherry liqueur, one half ounce of sweet vermouth, and one half ounce of blood orange. We're using Dolan uh, because personally I I don't like a lot of vermouths, but Dolan has a very, very floral nature that I enjoy. Um, it's nice and sweet. Um, it's exactly what I want out of a sweet vermouth when I'm making drinks. So that's my personal, that's my sweet vermouth of choice. And we're using Hearing Cherry Liqueur, which is kind of like the Cointreau of cherry liqueurs um, in that it's like what Cherry, what this is to cherry liqueur as Cointreau is to triple sec. It's a cut above. Yeah, this is like like the cherry liqueur that you should be using, especially in a drink like Blood and Sand or in single porcelain. Paul works at a cocktail bar. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I'm very excited about this drink, honestly. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I still smell. It's that straight lots, Lagavulin. Lots nose. of Nick Offerman Lagavulin. Ooh, hmm. that's interesting. I like it. I taste a lot of the Lagavulin again, but it's nicely balanced by mm -hmm. the cherry liqueur, and I don't know what the vermouth is doing, but presumably it's something. <laughs> There's like a... Ooh, very smoky finish. I was gonna say, I'm looking... I know it because I'm looking for it, because I've tasted this vermouth on its own, of course. I, I drink everything I get on its own before I put it in anything. Um, there's like a floral note that almost complements the the peat of the scotch really well. I think this is very tasty. Oh yeah, this is a really good drink. Um, I don't know. I think this Lagavulin is a good fit for it. It's nice and you know, like I said, it's got that nice smoky taste aroma too mm -hmm. uh, but it goes perfectly with the cherry liqueur it really does it's like it's almost <laughs> this is said in a good way but it might sound like it's a bad thing 
but like like it's almost like drinking what you'd imagine a cherry wood smoked like piece of meat would be like yeah well uh, sweeter than what that would actually be like obviously um but hey smoked and- smoked meats are pretty pretty good <laughs> pretty good <laughs> uh, I almost wish that we had doubled the amount of blood orange juice in this um, because I, I almost want more of that citrusy note accompanying the, the floral and cherry notes with the peat um, just because I feel like that would elevate this cocktail slightly more. So I think um, maybe just with the ingredients we're using, a little bit more blood orange juice would be ideal. But this is this is tasty. Like it all complements each other very well. Yeah, I do want to say... This is still not for everyone. If a like a smoky peaty scotch is not your thing, like if you've never had a single malt before, um, you probably, probably still won't enjoy this. You probably this, yeah. will not like this. This is a great cocktail for the lucky people specifically. Um, and we haven't mentioned this yet, but the the Guinness notes with the cherry is phenomenal. There's like a like a dark like coffee cherry chocolate like like taste going on underneath everything else that is just phenomenal like if you like a good smoky scotch if you if you're into single malt scotches i think you would really you'd really love this drink yeah it's good we're gonna play a game one more time and then we'll give you some parting thoughts all right pencil time this will probably be another train wreck but we'll see here we go that ticonderoga Mm, smell smells better than the scotch (laughs) Well, <laughs> debatable. Hey, look at that. Shoot! Beans. Beans! Oh, I was close, I was close. Uh. Oh! oh, no! So close and yet so far. We should do a poker night. Hey, oh, I got it! This game sucks. It's way too hard. This is really difficult. I don't know why I got it on the first try, but Jesus. That being said, uh, Lagavulin 11-year Nick Offerman edition. If finished in Guinness casks. Finished in Guinness casks. If it's what you're looking for, it's, it's probably pretty perfect. good. Yeah. Honestly, well, okay, that's the thing. I do not have much experience with single malt Isle scotches, which is partially on me for buying this as quickly as I did. Um, because it's very much an acquired taste. It's very peaty. It's very smoky. Very smoky. The Guinness notes are there. I enjoy them. But that being said, this isn't really the scotch for me, except for in those cocktails where it performed admirably. Yeah. It's not the scotch for me either. I like a kind of fruity, fun, blended scotch. Monkey Shoulder. Monkey Shoulder is my favorite drink in the world. Um... At least among pure liquors. And uh, this is not up my alley, but if you're a big Nick Offerman fan or you like a kind of interesting um, single malt Isla scotch, then sure, if you've got 80 bucks to drop on, <laughs> on some whiskey, go for it. This Full is good. disclosure, I bought this because I am a big Nick Offerman fan. Yeah. So I love Nick Offerman. Everything he does is fun. I think if you're not a big Nick Offerman fan, you could do better. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to score this because that just doesn't feel right. <laughs> that score we've used for liquors costing less than like $12, so this doesn't deserve to be on the same scale, yeah. honestly. But, you know, it's it's fine. If, you know, if you can afford it and if it's what you're into, then go for it. Really depends on what you're looking for. If you're a big scotch drinker, you probably wouldn't have found this YouTube page anyways, but <laughs> I can honestly recommend it. <laughs> yeah. So this has been Bottom Shelf Bar. I'm Connor. I'm Paul. And we'll see you in the next episode. As always, leave a like and let us know if you have anything you want us to try, because clearly we'll do it. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Teased by a pencil. Yikes. <laughs> Somebody's teasing you with a pencil. I think you should probably uh... <laughs> not be into sounding. <laughs> <laughs>